Hello guys, Hi for Yagami with a review of Once Upon a Time Season 5. So, um, Season 5 has ended. Um, I know I'm kind of late with the video, but you know, been busy, work, working about to work two jobs, plus school, so it's going to be hectic. But anyway, let's get into Once Upon a Review. Once, I said Once Upon a Review. Once Upon a Time. Anyway, so the first half of the season of Season 5, we dealt with the whole Dark Swan and... We got into not only a history of whether of, of the Dark One, but also how Magic came to be. And we also got introduced to um, a new location and two characters, two new, no, well, I thought it, was, I think it should be like four new characters within the first half of the season. We're introduced to the land of Camelot and along with it, um, King Arthur, Guinevere, Lancelot, we already met before, um... Merlin and Nimue. The only reason I remember her name because Animue, 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 Animue. That's the only reason I remember her name. And of course, um, the whole you know the magical artifact, the Holy Grail. So the plot line goes with basically summary of the first season, half of the season is okay. Emma is the dark one. And they're trying to know everybody trying to figure out why she's the dark one. They're trying to figure out why they can't remember what happened in Camelot. So like past seasons, they have the whole memory loss thing. You have to, you know, go back and try to figure out what happened. So we're shown, we're of course like past season, we're shown through flashbacks. So we saw what happens. Um, Emma was trying to hold off the darkness, and since she is the current new one, uh, we see that previous dark ones can talk to her. You know, kind of like um, in the Avatar: The Last Airbender, where Aang can. Um, talk to previous avatars like Kyoshi and Roku, like that. It's kind of like that, basically. And so, what happens when made her become and sort of embrace the darkness is when Hook dies and she tries to save his life, which then causes him to be another dark one. So, instead of just being Emma being the dark swan, you also get a dark Hook. So, that's why she turned, you know, pretty much dark one, but she wasn't like fully there if you get what I'm saying like if you notice with all the past dark ones like Rumpelstiltskin, Nimue when they went full evil when they went completely dark their their skin tone has changed they, they had a more um scaly glittery s complexion Emma she doesn't have that so Emma did bad things but it wasn't like evil like she actually hasn't killed anybody I mean she hurt her son's feelings but that was like Bad. That was like evil. It was just bad. But she hasn't really done anything bad. So I would say Emma, in terms of being a dark one, she did pretty good at suppressing majority of the darkness, which is good for her. She pretty much, pretty much kept majority of it at bay. So, you know, compared to other dark ones, that is like amazing. And so what happens um, when Hook becomes a dark one? Because he has been evil before. I thought he's Captain Hook. He sort of immediately gave into that darkness. <laughs> And was basically mad at Emma for it. Emma for turning him into the Dark One. And so um, the Dark Ones, all the previous Dark Ones pretty much tell Hook, like, give him this plan to, like, bring us on land and pick seven people to take our place because this has to be an exchange. So when Hook does redeem himself, he kills himself, thus absorbing all the Dark Ones into the little da into the dagger. However, Rumpelstiltskin had a plan of his own since he was no longer the Dark One. Emma was. Rumpelstiltskin is now the Dark One yet again. But now he has his power is now amplified because he now has all the Dark One's power, like, all together. It's like he can go to, like, an Avatar state, like, like that on 24-7, right? So... With that first half of the sees first half of the season brings us into the underworld where we're introduced yet again to the Wicked Witch of the West, Zelina, who is the sister of Regina, daughter of Cora. Um who's the daddy again? Oh yes, man, Cora Mitch. Yeah. We're also introduced to Hades, Lord of the Underworld, as you've seen in the movie Disney's version of Hercules. And of course we do see Hercules and Megara. They're, they only appeared in one episode, which was kind of sad. I'm like, no. Because I was looking so forward to her. I was like, yes, Sarah here. Da -da -da, Sarah here. I like this one. But I did like, um, 
them, you know, del delving into the Greek mythology aspect of it. I did like that. I think it was cool. Um, what I did like about how they made the underworld was um, the underworld resembled Storybook. Like, a lot of those, a lot of people are mad about that. But we realized that Hades, like, majority of characters on the show, they each, everybody does have, like, a true love. For Hades is actually Zelina. And with their romance is, it's clear that Hades does love Zelina, but just like Rumpelstiltskin, power and revenge was more of, kind of was like number one on this list compared to Zelina. And Zelina, I was happy for her because she finally is, um, I was happy for her because somebody did love her and she, and, and it's for her to realize, you know, just because you're the Wicked Witch West, and yeah, your mother kind of fucked up and abandoned you <laughs> because she was trying to make her life better. You know, and that she could be loved, and it was like hard for Selena like to let her heart open because of that past. So I think that was good in terms of the development character character development for Selena. Like it was, I think that was, I thought that was very good to see that Selena let her heart be open to the possibility of love. And not only that, we actually got to see some. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some resolve, I guess you would say. Between Cora, Regina, and Zelina. Cora does admit that basically she was wrong and that we that Zelina and Regina actually met before when they were younger. When Regina was playing around with her wine. Messed up. And so she had to give Zelina because only somebody who had, you know, a blood connection could undo what, what was done. And so they did know each other and they was friends and, you know, became friends and they liked the idea of being sisters. Cora fucked that up. <laughs> Gave him a freaking forgetful potion. I'm like, damn, Cora. So, Cora finally made her amends, and that was the reason why she was in Underworlds, why she could move on, because Zelina was her unfinished business. So, once she, you know, did that, she was able to move on. So, I'm like, that's good for Cora. You know, it took you long to realize what you needed to do in the first damn place, but I guess everybody needs to do something, some do it sometime. Okay, then we have, okay, the main reason they were down there in the first place was because of Hook. So, um, they have to do this whole trial and everything to try to get Hook back to the above. But of course, you know, being in the underworld, they do meet some familiar faces like Cruella Neville, who wants Henry to literally write her back to life. Henry refuses, so uh, she has to find someone else to do it. Charming's brother is pissed at him because he felt that Charming pretty much took his life. The shepherd took his life. But what Charming told his brother was basically, I didn't take your life. I, I He basically didn't want his life because he grew up as a shepherd and he was basically happy. But the reason he became a prince in the first place was because you died trying to defeat a dragon. You cannot blame your fault or your death upon me. You know what I'm saying? They still needed the prince, and so basically nobody was gonna tell those twins apart. Not nobody knew. So you, so him blaming his whole death upon Charming, that was a hatred with him that something he was gonna he was gonna need to deal with. But he's never gonna deal with it now because he's he's in a river. He's stuck forever. Because in Hades, there's four different rivers that are each color coded. The green one, you 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 fall in there. That's it. You're in there forever. It's like the, um. The little swirly pool in the Disney movie Hercules. Remember the one we saw with Meg? And Hercules had to go and save her soul. And Hercules was like, you're going to be dead before you get to her. That one, but he doesn't die because he finally became a true hero. It was, it's that color water. Then there was the blue one. Yeah, is it blue? Because, yeah, it's gr green, blue. And it was a yellow one. I, like, I don't know if they told us what the yellow one does. Which I was kind of disappointed because I'm like, okay. Each color of water does something different. Okay, okay. different. Damn it. And the blue one is the forgetful stuff. Like, you, you drink it, you forget. So, you know. And I think it was, yeah, it was green, blue, yellow. And I, was, I think I think it was one more color. And I think those last two, we just never knew what they did. Kind of disappointing. So, with Rumpelstiltskin, with his character, what we also find out is, um, Reg um, Belle does find out Rumpelstiltskin is back to the dark one and she's pissed. And um, the thing is, also, Rumpel and Belle are going to have a baby. 
So the past, Rumpel's past of, you know, signing his child away, his ex-child away, is not going to affect Belle. So she's like, you signed a child away? Look, he didn't know he was going to have another baby. Like, he didn't know, you know. You know, he didn't know. But now this affects Belle because she's actually pregnant. Hades currently has the contract. So, Rumpel has to find a way to pretty much get the contract torn up. Which he eventually does with the help of his father, Peter Pan. Mm, let's see. We do meet Hercules and Megara, like I said before. Hercules actually does know one of the characters previously. It was actually Snow White. It was like a cute little crush. It was like so cute. And you could say when the Snow kind of told Charming, you could tell he was a little jealous. I mean, but who would who wouldn't be jealous jealous of a demigod? I mean, Hercules' dad is Zeus, the king of the gods. Even though Zeus is a hoe, you still the king of the gods. Okay. Um, Hercules um, was completing his twelve labors. Upon his tough labor is when he died, which was um, defeating the three-headed dog, Sybaris. And when he died, then the, the three-headed dog goes and kills Megara. So that's why they were both down there. Then um, once they completed their unfinished business, killing Sybaris, they both was able to move on. So Hercules is finally able to live on Mount Olympus. Kind of sad it's not the way it happened in the Disney movie. Because I was actually hoping for, you know, a hand from the mountain top. A star is born. I was kind of waiting for that happy cheerful moment. I mean, it was still cheerful, but he was kind of dead, though. You know, kind of sucked. Oh, shit. Got my spread. Um, Hades. Hades' whole thing, once he... Uh, had true love's kiss by Zelina. His heart started in because it was um stopped, and so he wanted this powerful crystal. It was like what is it called? What is it called? The Chronos crystal. It was something I know. Something related to Greek mythology. <sighs> he wanted that to basically. You know, his whole plot line in Hercules rule. Oh! You know. So when the game figured this out, um, Hook cannot go back on land because Emma's heart cannot be split into half. So Hook is stuck down there, which kind of sucks. And so Hook ends up helping Camelot, who was killed by Hades when Hades arrives to Storybook. So Camelot, like, maybe the kingdom I was supposed to rule, it wasn't supposed to be Camelot. Maybe it was down here. Because, you know, all the people still have unfinished business. And you got Corolla because Hades now gonna going to try to rule the underworld. So, that you got that situation. When the gang gets back to Storybrook, there is, of course, they got to fight Hades. Um, Robin Hood ends up losing his life trying to protect Regina. Zelina realizes that Yes, Hades loves her, but he loves power. The as I said before, the power and revenge more. So she ends up stabbing him with the crystal, thus killing him. Cause that's the only way you're gonna kill a god. Um, Henry becomes upset, and this is this is what made me hate Henry so much within this season. Was he's like, I'm gonna destroy magic, cause it ruins everything. I'm like, dude, shut up. It, I mean, I mean, if it wasn't for magic, your little ass wouldn't be here. If you if you haven't noticed, um, your mother was sent through a fucking magical tree, which saved her from the curse set on by Regina. So it was magic that brought you here, you idiot. Anyway, <laughs> so Henry realizes that if there is a holy grail, then there must be like sort of an anti because you know magic kind of comes to Paris. Because that was the whole thing with Merlin, which was which was in the first half of the season. Merlin found the Holy Grail many, many years ago, drank from it, and thus magic was born. But when you have that, I, um, but he was prim primarily good magic. So his op the opposite of good magic eventually would have to come along sometime. So Nimue is was the original dark one, the original sort. I guess you would say source of dark magic. She. In her heart had revenge because of this masked man who pretty much destroyed her village. So when she drank from the Holy Grail when they were trying to run for him and Merlin wanted to destroy it using the sword Excalibur. 
Then we had drank the cup and thus stabbed the man and thus that her first kill sort of turned her into the first dark one. So there you go, you have good magic, dark magic. And so since you had a holy girl that gave you good magic that was also one to destroy it, which was like I think, I think it was black. And so he used it to suck in the the piece of crystal that Rumpelstiltskin had found to try to save Belle who was given a sleeping curse by Zelina because she figured, okay, Hades can't take my baby if I'm in a sleeping curse. You know? I'm like, oh my god, Belle, you're so stupid. And Belle got my nerves this season too because I'm going to finish first. So, when Henry destroys magic, Belle ends up getting kidnapped because somebody sucked her away through a portal yet again. And Rumpel could have saved Belle, but of course, his love of power was more than his love for Belle. So, he ended up going for the crystal instead of going for Belle. That's how Belle got sucked through the portal. And so, when Henry just took magic, n n Regina nor Emma nor Rumpel Susan could do anything because he kind of took it off. So, when they tell, um, when they tell Henry that they need to go, they need their magic to help save their family back in Stormbrook because they was trying to, um, they let Merida know because I forgot also for Merida. Merida was introduced in the season two. We, her whole story was, you know, pretty much what happened after the movie Brave. Her father died. Her three brothers was kidnapped by the other members of the, of the, of the boys that we saw who would be her, her suitors for her to wed. They didn't like the idea of basically didn't like the idea of a woman leading them, so she had to prove it and had to go through the whole thing with the witch again, like proving yourselves to be uh, worthy and shit. It was just all the tests, so they end up letting her be queen. That's based on her story. So, gang gets sucked through a portal. They find himself in a new land. I'm like, okay, now what's going on? Because you know, we got to lead into the next season. So, um, when they get Henry to, uh, Henry had to find a way to get magic back again. So, he goes through this whole thing in New York. He's like, you gotta believe in magic and stuff. And people do look at him like, what? And so, when the gang is saved from the land they was at before, everybody's like, yeah. And Henry's like, they didn't believe it. They think it's just a show. Well, yeah, it's New York. Do you know how much New, do you know how much New York probably sees on a daily basis of the shit that's just weird and probably out of the box? I mean, they have a naked guitar playing man, and I think a guitar, a naked guitar playing woman. So them seeing people pop out of a freaking fountain, they probably think it's just a show. You know, maybe something Disney was doing like to promote a new attraction, like some good special effects. Because I ain't gonna lie, special effects has been popping lately in this term. You know, because we got that new technology and stuff. So they probably thought it was some like awesome special effects, like oh, good show, good show. Um, so when they get back to Storybook. The person they met when they went to that new mysterious land. I forgot what they called it. But we are introduced to a new character. And this character isn't from a fairy tale. But like from a classic literature. They end up meeting Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Because I kind of figured that's what it was. When it first came, when, it, when it came on. They kept showing you the skinny dude. And then when he would leave. This other dude would pop up. And he was more mean. I'm like this got to be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And when they actually showed I'm like yes I knew Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Because we already got to see Frankenstein. So we already know they could do other characters like that. And what's also interesting is when we saw Henry go to the library. Because we're looking for the, um, the negative Holy Grail. He saw there was other storybooks. He's like, I thought I only had one. Like, no, there's many. I'm like, there's many stories. So there's no way in the world they could offer in that one little book. So they're showing you other storybooks and showing you there's other stories. So storybook, so the creators of the storybooks, like, look, we got plenty of stories we can pull from to pull into this shop. I'm like, yes. But well, I kind of want them to finish certain characters first. Or are you trying to bring in new characters? So basically the plot line that's going to be following into season six is going to be um, it's gonna be Regina who, because she doesn't want herself to be the evil queen again, um, got a potion from Dr. Jekyll where you split your good half from your evil half. So that's why you, we, we see Jekyll and Hyde literally as two people, but they're both one and the same. So the plot line of season six is gonna revolve around you gotta, you have both good and bad within yourself. You know, you can't, you can't separate one from the other. You know, you just gotta be able to control both of them. You need both of them for balance. I mean, cause that's nice that Regina wants to be good, but sometimes you're gonna need a little bit of your evil queen. Same thing with Rumpelstiltskin. Like, everybody hates Rumpelstiltskin in the show because of his behavior, especially Belle. But I'm like, Belle, 
you fell in love with Rumpel not just because he was Rumpelstiltskin, the man, but you all fell in love with him because he was a beast. I mean, we even saw Belle herself had good and bad within herself. We know her goodness is Belle. Her bad side is known as Lacey. If you remember that episode where um, she kind of lost her memory and she was Lacey. And Rumpel still still was trying to run her back. But he was trying to win her back as Rumpel while she was Lacey. Lacey didn't like R good Rumpel. But when Rumpel turned to find herself, Rumpel still saying, was beating that dude's ass. She's like, I like that. And Rumpel's like, hey. So Belle does like Rumpel whether he is his good self or when, he, or when he's his bad self. She likes them both. And the fact that she's denying that to herself is absolutely ridiculous you fell in love with you can't fall in love with one part of a person you have to fall in love with all of them every aspect every single flaw you gotta love all of a person so that's gonna be pretty much gonna be the plot for season six is Rump, Regina learns to love both aspects of herself you gotta love, you gotta love the good and bad because even I mean some there are some days I can be good there's some days I can be bad. It's who I am. I'm a person. You know, I'm gonna have flaws. You know, no nobody on this earth is perfect, and that's what Regina and majority of these characters is gonna have to learn on. This sh is gonna learn on the show is you have to take all of it. I mean, we we see almost every character either be good or bad, but we still love them anyway. We still find it in our hearts to forgive people. Now, there's some things you can't come back from that makes you. And that destroys your trust and so like killing somebody like Cruella Deville. <laughs> that she was just plain evil. She was born evil. But every character we have met so far on the show has good and bad and bad in them. Whether it's Maleficent or it's Snow White, they're all capable of good and evil. It's just the choices you make that set you on that path. Plain and simple. So that is all from a review for season five of Once Upon a Time. I will see you guys next season for season six. Comment, rate, subscribe, tell me what you think, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.